Ladies and gentlemen from the lovely lands of Oregon and Lake Oswego. <laughs> and uh, is it Oswego? I always say Oswego. No, it's Oswego. Oh, okay. Um, you say Oswego, I say Oswego. Anyway, um, uh, this is Ronnie Bennett. This is, uh, this is an ex-wife. An ex-wife. What is it for? Is it three or four you've had? Um, uh, uh, I'm on my fourth. Oh, jeez. Well, come on. I've lived long enough. I deserve it. Um, did I, have I told on this show, have I told the Elizabeth Taylor story? What, what Elizabeth Taylor story? When I was producing Barbara Walters' special yeah. interviews, we were interviewing Elizabeth Taylor. Yeah. And we did it at, uh, it was interesting, at, at the, it's now burned down, but back then it still was around the western town out in the desert in Arizona that was used as the town in every western movie you ever saw. Uh -huh. And uh, and she was it was a period piece and she was in a big flouncy dress like a southern belle sort mm -hmm. of thing. And uh, we were there on a day they were shooting. And so her uh, her number of marriages came up and the question was uh, Elizabeth you've been married nine times. And she had the most perfect answer. It hardly applies anymore, but it still did back then, 30-odd years ago. And she said, but Barbara, I didn't just sleep with them. I married them all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, my answer to that question usually is they say, you've been married four times? I said, yeah, and I'm going to keep doing it till I get it right. Yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. Well, you're running out of time. Buddy. I'm running out of time. But you know, I went, I went, but 15 years. I think 15, uh, longer than that, maybe without getting remarried. So I went through a, for a long period of time not being married. All right. See, I've never, I have lived alone. You know, as childhood aside, you know, when mm -hmm. you live with your parents, I have lived alone for all but the six years with you and mm -hmm. four or five years with a man I lived with for that period of time. Other than that, I've always lived by myself. Wow. I'm probably useless. I mean, if somebody wanted to share my space, I'd probably be a miserable roommate, married or otherwise. Well, you know, I mean, uh, you shouldn't feel guilty about that. Listen, I know, remember Paul Krasner? He's dead of now. He's dead now. But he, he got married, and his wife lived across the street. So she kept living there. Mm-hmm. You know? Maybe that's the way you do it. You know, nobody says you have to live together. You know, I had a friend years and years and years ago, way back, I mean, before you and I were married, yeah. who believed that husbands and wives should keep separate apartments, that that was the only way to preserve a long-term marriage. Uh, I think that two people living in the same space constantly can drive you nuts. Okay. Oh. In my particular situation, my wife goes to work every day, but she's thinking about retiring, and I'm thinking to myself, that means we're always going to be in the same space all the time. Yeah, you've got a huge apartment. There's lots of places to go and close the door. Yeah, I, we can do that. Yes. Yes. And she's decided the bedroom is her office. So, you know, I mean, there's no way, yeah. you know. That but works. but nevertheless, still when you when you talk about, it, I mean, what what do you what do you do? You know, I mean, um, you you have to give yourself some space, and uh, I mean, I know a lot of very. I see, I, Alex, let, stop there. Yeah. I don't think that's true. I think that lots of people. Maybe you had to. You and I were. Well, I wasn't. But I was for a lot of the time an only child until my brother was born. Mm -hmm. But unless you grow up with a gigantic family, mm -hmm. maybe that's what makes the difference. Um, I, I said that kind of backwards. What I mean is that I think that most people want other people around them all the time. That it's not a question of can you go somewhere and close the door. It doesn't come up with them. That they like having people around all the time. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know that that's true, but I think it is. Yeah, but, but you need still, I mean, that's nice that you want people around, and that makes sense, okay? But it, it what's the point I'm trying to make here? It, it, it's a question of just 
not being in that same space all the time. Now, I, as I, you say, I'm lucky. I've got this apartment with a lot of room. I can pretty well disappear in it while she's in another room. But a lot of people don't have that. And I don't know if that would change. If she were a, around all the time, if, if it wouldn't drive us both nuts, you know. I don't know. I don't know. I just think I mean, that you know I'm capable of driving somebody nuts. So, <laughs> <Yes>. you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's why she's married to you and I'm not. <laughs> That's correct. That's correct. <laughs> So listen, uh, one thing I mentioned when we first started uh, talking before we started this was uh, your hair is looking, you, you're, that's actually a, a kind of almost a punk look. Oh, yeah, well, that's pretty old, isn't it? Um, it? What happens is if you lose all your hair while you're having chemo and it takes, for the longest time, it's just a little bit of fuzz on your head. It takes forever to grow out. And then, of course, it grows out at all of these different lengths you've never messed around with much in your life so you do the best you can every morning today it's a little punk rocky you know so well i mean you know i i, I'm, I think maybe i should take a still frame of each of the last many <laughs> things we've done and do a a evolution of your hair growing back well, in a lot of people and not just one or two a lot of people over the years have talked about the banner of the pictures of me like from age two till now yeah. across the top of my blog and called it a history of Ronnie's hairstyles. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Which, uh, uh, if you go to her blog, which is uh, timegoesby.net, you will see across the top there are pictures of her. Now, of, of those pictures, which one is the worst? Which is the worst hairstyle you ever had? I'll tell you what I think, but you go ahead and you tell I me. think the one when I'm 18 and it's very tight to my head and it's all very 1950s buttoned up kind of a hairstyle. Really? I Yo. think it's the blonde. Well, that one's blonde. Oh, That's it was blonde? One. Oh, okay, yeah. I didn't, when you went blonde, I went, why? You well, know? because it was the times, you know? But if, we, there, if there was anybody who shouldn't be a blonde, it was you. Why? I don't know. You just, you're you're not a blonde. Look at what I'm stuck with now. I mean, it's white, not blonde, or grayish white, but... But that, um, that's natural. That's where, where it, that's where it goes after a while. Sometimes it doesn't go anywhere after a while, you know. But, it, 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 yeah, so, I mean, but I, I think it looks very good now. It's looking cool, you know. Well, it, see, it'll keep growing unless I have it cut, and so then I'll have to figure out something new. We'll see what happens. Well, you had your hair very short when I first met you, right, when you hopped in the back seat of that car that I was in. You know, I don't remember what my hair was Because then. I distinctly remember at least my initial impression when you came into the car was, well, who's this guy? Because you oh, No, really? well, well, wait a minute, because your hair was short and it was dark. Okay? okay. You know, and then I looked and it was a woman. And here we are, 50-odd uh, years here later. Here we are, 50-odd years later. Oh, God, has it been that long, dear? Closer to 60, I would bet. Closer to 60. Now, let's we see, I was... We in 59... Yeah, the Old Town Coffee awesome. House was where I met you, outside mm -hmm. of it. In front of the Old Town Coffee House, yes. Yeah, and you lived right next door to it. Yes, I had an apartment in a house there, yes. Yeah, so that was your place of hanging out. So oh, and also the guy, the guy said, I'm picking up my friend Ronnie. So when I heard that, I mean, immediately guy oh, comes Ronnie, to mind. Ronnie, so you thought a guy too. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Um, while we've been talking, and this is Thursday morning that we're recording this, mm -hmm. Um, the hearing with Joseph McGuire, McGuire yeah. seems to have just ended. Mm -hmm. Did you watch any of it? I watched some of it, yeah. Uh, th those hearings, I get very frustrated with them because I don't think a lot is comes out of those things. You know, because everybody's sitting there with an agenda and that's it. You know, <clears throat> and I like to hear... I'd like to hear one Republican say, I want to find out some things here. So maybe I can make up my own mind. I think a couple of them did that this morning. Yeah, well, I didn't stick through the whole thing, so I didn't, I didn't see that happening. But when I tuned in, it was the same old suspects going, well, we all know the president didn't do anything wrong, and he has the right to decide for himself what's good for America. You know, <laughs> bullshit. Fuck you. Blow me. Well, okay, it's hard to argue with that. Well, that's my answer to everything to somebody like that these days. Blow me. 
Come on, Alex. God. I'm trying to uphold some propriety. Here. I know, I know. Well, you're the dignity of the team, and I'm the. Uh... <laughs> it just, um, what frustrated me this morning with McGuire yeah. was that he had been, the media had uh, promoted him to us in the last day or two as someone filled to the brim with integrity. And like every single one before you, him, whether you like them or don't like them, mm -hmm. they all refuse to answer a bunch of yes or no questions. And it's just amazing what they can find to say. Uh, you know, if I ask you, Alex, are you wearing a hat or not? Instead of saying yes, you start this long rambling paragraph about whether you have to answer questions about wearing hats. And it just well, drives me here's crazy. the thing. Here's the thing. I watched this guy, and uh, I felt sorry for him. And the reason I felt sorry for him it was very apparent that this was not a situation in which he felt comfortable. You know, he feels he comfortable. Done this kind of thing much. Right. He feels comfortable being in office, shouting out orders. You know, and he's not. Forty years in the military as SEAL. Yeah, not used to this. And so and all of a sudden, he's put in a, on a dais where he's got to become a public figure. And a lot of people don't know how to do that, and he didn't seem very comfortable in the role. No. You know. No, and how long, um, how long do you think gonna, is it going to be before, they, um, before the, the whistleblower's name is leaked? I mean, this morning, a whole lot of people were saying him. And a few people have... have been told the person's name and because they kept saying him and all day yesterday they were saying him or her that some of them know who this person is i think yeah um and i don't know they say that he has to be he or she has to be protected carefully protected because it would affect his his or her career if you or became a whistleblower because as this person seems to think something terrible was being done mm -hmm. by some people in the administration that needed to be addressed. Mm -hmm. um, and in particularly if it turned out that it was a nonpartisan complaint and a whole lot of it held up to scrutiny, mm -hmm. wouldn't there be recourse if somebody tried to fire you or not allow you to be hired somewhere else or tried to stop your career? Well, Don't you think? Yeah, my question is, to begin with, we don't know where in the situation this person was. In other words, it, it, was it somebody that was in uh, Trump's inner circle or was it somebody who was simply assigned to listen into this because a lot apparently not not assigned to listen in and didn't listen in he heard he or she heard these things that were written down in the complaint mm -hmm. um from a bunch of insiders okay and that and what impressed the whistleblower was that they corroborated in separate interviews or discussions corroborated one another okay so this wasn't somebody who was privy to the conversation. Well, so as far as we know now, everything is speculative until yeah. we find out the facts. Yeah. But my question is, I mean, you know, I'm, look, <clears throat> nothing I would like to see more than, is, than, than impeachment. Uh, however, uh, the other problem is we got then have Pence. Uh, so that's not acceptable to me. I'm just saying we're a year away from an election. Let's have that be the referendum. You know, let's let's do it there, huh? I, I don't agree. Okay. That if if it's found by this inquiry, I'm never sure of the right word anymore that mm -hmm. we're supposed to call it. Um, and impeachment follows, and I would rather if the Republicans who control the Senate and are the Jury, the, the jury in, in the trial, in an impeachment trial, um, I would rather see him gone now that as a public statement in a certain kind of court of law that he was found guilty than just, oh, we didn't reelect him. He's done so much that is so terrible. Mm -hmm. 
I want him. I want him to suffer. No, no, <laughs> that that hadn't occurred. It's not suffer, although it, you know it wouldn't bother. Well, me. this would make him suffer. I mean, an impeachment would make him suffer because he has a big ego. Yes, yeah. but I mean that's you know that that the, the point is is someone that a person even at the highest level was held to account for wrongdoing and we've done a real bad job of that in the last three years yeah yeah i would like to see it done okay that way as yeah. opposed to the election all right I mean, then, then you just fade away you know you go off and you know there's bill clinton and there's all the rest and he takes pictures with other ex-presidents forever um i wonder that if he is convicted in the impeachment I wonder when they do that, you know, once or twice a year, all the living ex-presidents get together somewhere and their picture gets taken, if Trump would be included. How would you treat a disgraced president? Well, look at all that he has said about Obama. Now, uh, you know, I don't care if you're a Republican or you're a Democrat. Obama was a decent guy. You know, Obama wasn't an evil human being. No. On, uh, on any level. In many cases. And he certainly, so he certainly doesn't deserve the kind of ire that this president has presented him. Uh, the, the, the problem is, is that most presidents never talk about ex-presidents. It's just considered not proper. In this case, he goes out of his way to try to do everything to besmirch Obama. Oh, do you know, I just discovered yesterday, speaking of that exactly... I just found out yesterday, I had somehow missed it until it came up in the news somewhere, that part of what he was asking the Ukrainian president to do mm -hmm. was find Clinton's emails in Ukraine, <laughs> on a surfer in Ukraine. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, he won the election. This? But no, he won the election. Why can't he let this go? Well, you know, he just we've all been asking that for a long time. Well, you know, I I claim it all goes back to the correspondence dinner. He got it. He hates Obama for the correspondence dinner. That's where it all started, because uh, he his obsession with Obama is just unrelenting. And it's fair. It's been horribly, horribly terrible for the environment. Everything that Obama got through to protect the environment, yeah. he's been dismantling one by one by one. I mean, dozens of them, dozens yeah. of them. Now, let me ask you a question, okay? This this goes along with your old people blog and everything like that. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm 79. I will soon be 80. Mm, that's a big birthday. I guess. Uh, it, Are you going to have a cake with that many candles? Uh -huh. Can you blow that many out? Uh, just watch yourself. Uh, <laughs> Listen, I'm the one with COPD. I couldn't do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But anyway, uh, 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 I'm going to be 80. Uh, so, why? Let me just ask you an adversarial question. Mm. Why should I give a shit? I don't have any. I don't have any children, right? I don't have any. Why progeny. should you give a shit about what? About what happens to this country, because I'm not going to be around for the re for the real results of it. I mean, this is going to be devastating in say 15 years when everything that he did comes to you know comes to full boil. Uh, why should I care? Because you believe in in the democracy, you believe in your country, you believe in the future. Mm-hmm. But why Don't should you? I care about the future? I'm just saying. I'm just asking you. No, a, I'm, I'm giving you my answer. Yeah. How can you not believe in the future? And as good a life as we can live behind, leave behind mm -hmm. for okay. future generations. All That's right. important to me. Well, I think we've done a terrible job of it. What, what you're talking about is legacy. You know, All the, right. The, I mean, that's another word yeah. for it. Yeah, we should leave a legacy behind that we tried to stop this kind I of mean, thing. Democracies can't be perfect. And so each generation, I think, has an obligation. You know, what's the phrase in one of the founding documents to form a more perfect union? Mm -hmm. um, is that we try to keep making it better and better and make it work better, be more fair. Um, each generation that takes power. And certainly I care what we leave behind. Speaking of that, can we go on? Wait, 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 There's I just, something I, we really I, need to say. I, uh, hold on a second. I have to do something here because your picture suddenly decided to get small. 
Wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on a second. Oh, there. It just got larger again. Oh, well, you know. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I've never had that happen yet in this. Well, uh, yeah. That's what yeah. makes it fun. Yeah. But do, isn't Greta wonderful? Isn't what? Greta wonderful. Greta? Greta from Sweden. Oh, 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 the kid. Yeah, yeah. Oh, she's just, I mean, <laughs> she puts pretty much a, a large number of our legislators to shame. I yeah. mean, the passion the caring, the, uh, the the speech at the UN was just stunning. Yeah, yeah. No. And it brought to mind, I, I'm writing about it right now, um, it brought to mind the, the biblical phrase from the Old Testament, and a little child shall lead them. Yeah. I haven't seen any grown-up show that kind of passion for the environment and the world. I, and and I, I try to figure out exactly where it comes from at that age, but it... it Maybe it came from her parents. Her parents may be real. I don't know. But, you know, I kind of try, in, in my mind, I, I connected her. Do you remember David Hogg from Parkland? Yeah. One of the survivors of the Parkland shooting? Yeah. And those kids that organized that the, the, uh, the anti-gun march and that sort of thing, they're all in college now. They're working hard. Yeah. You know, they've got four years to get through college. But they're still, when they've got the time, working as gun advocates um, is that what I mean? I, I don't mean advocates. <laughs> um, uh, in their spare time. Yeah. But these are really committed kids. And I do, were there people in our generation when we were that young on whatever they found lacking that they wanted to change? That I, were, I think, I think in the anti Vietnam people, maybe. In the Vietnam era, there was a lot of that. But, yeah. but then again, Okay, well, this this holds true here too. Then again, in Vietnam, there was they they were trying to save their own lives in that they could be drafted, they could be sent over there, and so on. Well, I mean, but in, in her case, in her case, some she, altruism well, too. Well, no, in her case, she's she's looking cousin. she's looking at the world she's going to be handed, okay, and that she she wants to be able to breathe the air, and that yeah. long after I'm gone and you're gone and and and, and Trump is gone. She's going to have to live with the results of whatever decisions are being made now, and so uh, I well, laud her. Been made for the last thirty years. I laud her for having that kind of, you know, that kind of. I mean, uh, but you see her speak. When, it's only five minutes or so long. Her speech at the UN on Monday, and you just say, "Yes, I will be there with you." Well, how old, yeah. how old is she? She's like four, four? How how old is she now? She's sixteen. Sixteen. You know, at 16, you'd imagine going into a 16-year-old's bedroom and there'd be pictures of, like, Justin Bieber on the walls. <laughs> but I, I, I don't know what's on her walls. Maybe a picture of an iceberg melting. I don't know, you know. <laughs> She's just wonderful. She gave me hope. Well, uh, uh, you know something? I think a lot of young people can give us hope. I think that young people today are far more aware of what's going on around them. Uh, than than even we did when we were kids. Well, we didn't have nearly as much media. There's, I mean, you want to know something? It just astonishes me, the things that I used to have to decide what I wanted to know. Then I had to get on a bus or the subway, depending on where I lived, or drive, yeah. go to the library, go to the card catalog, you know, and on and on and on to find right. an answer to a question. Right now, you now I can on. type a few words into a keyboard, and I can have 50 different answers the question it instantly almost close enough yeah so we've yeah. got what we've got going now is brain load yeah you, you that's know. the other problem <laughs> that's the other problem i mean the other problem is you get all these this stuff online and uh, which one is the right answer you know i mean you well, want to you, you know that's your job you're supposed to know how to sort that out yeah but aren't you going to sort it out based on your own biases no that's not what i'm talking about and come on, I've been I've had to do my own research all my life. Well, I yeah, know but, but, how to work out what is truth and what is somebody trying to fool me. Of course I'm I'm arguing with the research queen. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, as as a researcher, how do you sort out the truth from the false stuff that you get online? Well, there's some that's just obvious. If it's poorly written and misspelled, oh, I get well, rid of that, it right away. That's your I mean, start. You can get rid of about fifty percent that way, you know. <laughs> and then you look at the source. 
what publication is it from? Who is writing it? Are they sourcing it? Are they telling you where they got their facts? Um, and there's much more to it than that, but that's the beginning. Wow. Hey, listen, we've run out of time. Uh, we always do. We haven't once talked about health, you know. And no. we, we talked, but we have talked a lot about the, the world around us and uh, uh, from a very passionate, so Greta. <laughs> from a very passionate woman who uh, uh, will tell you has no problem telling you what she thinks. You know? No, she's the best. I really, I just. No, I'm talking was, about you. By the way, I'm talking a year and about. A half wait ago, wait I a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. David Hogg. I'm talking about you. Oh. <laughs> okay, I thought you were talking about Greta. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> hey, listen. Let's do it again in two weeks. Okay. All right, my dear. Ladies and gentlemen, Ronnie Bennett, timegoesby.net is her blog. Read it. It's worth it. And see pictures <laughs> of her through her entire life at the very top.